Hello and welcome to another episode of the Baron Earl Show. Um, today we are here with Chris Cross, and mm. and he and he has mood lighting because he recently moved, so he's in a mood. Yeah, you're um, in New York, right? Uh Jersey. Jersey. Uh, Jersey Better. City, actually. Wow. Yeah. So you're getting rich. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. I'm working on it. Yeah. yeah. It, so it's Cross, in flux. How yeah. did you get into comics? How did I get in? Um, yeah. um, the hallway. Um, basically, <clears throat> at first, uh, when I was younger, there was, of course, there was no internet. So my was my my road to uh, comic books was pretty much um, buying comics, looking at the indice at the bottom, trying to find out where Marvel and DC or first comics or uh uh you know dark horse or whoever showed up at the time was remember kamiko them two uh wherever they had an address i'll be able to mail some uh xeroxes or stuff that i did to them to show them what i'm trying to do or how i'm trying to get in and then i will wait for a response um sometimes it'd be dc would have situations where or marvel would have you could send a whole portfolio of stuff in and they they'll look at your stuff and they will send it back eventually what that could be months like basically, if you send that stuff, forget ever getting that stuff back because, you know, there was literally hundreds of people sending uh, some sort of artwork to them so they could get some sort of critique or uh, maybe that that blessing that they maybe start start working on a comic. But um, that that was the beginning of it. Then, of course, I did the convention circuit. When I used to go meet certain people, at convention, trying to find how to get in, and then eventually it was a situation where. Um, a friend of mine named Brian Marshall, he uh, he's done a lot of stuff in the industry, but he I met him when I was in high school, and I think it was I was around seventeen, I think it was I was no eighteen, well I was seventeen because I, I uh, we were about to graduate, so eighteen was like the month I would graduate when I had my birthday. But I found a, a guy that I used to go to uh, one of the one of the teachers I used to be uh, a student under. Or some kind of extra credit thing. He told me he knew about some cat who was doing comics. So I said, "Oh yeah." He said, "I see you drawing stuff all the time. I just want to take you to this guy and have you meet him." I'm like, "Okay, all right. Well, what's his name? His name is Brian David Marshall." So, so I said, "Okay, what does he do?" He said, "I'm not sure what the comics are, but you know, uh, I know he does it, and I think he should look at your stuff to see if you see if you could get a gig. See what happens." So I said, "At 17, what would I do?" He goes, "Age has nothing to do with it. just." If you got the you got the uh, the gusto, you got the hustle, just take it anyway. So, so we went there. I met up with him. There was a place, uh, Avenue O in Brooklyn, and uh, Brian had a house there with another guy he was partner partnering up with. And at that particular point, he was doing Lowestone Publishing. Um, he had another, uh, I think it was another company under another name, but I think that switched to Lowestone. He was doing Thunder Agents at the time, and he couldn't have been much older than I was, like me, me 18, 19 years old. So. I'm like, this young cat got a house. This young cat, he's like, he's he got a company. What the hell's happening? And I started asking, like, how did you get George Perez to do your covers? But they even hired a guy that even had George Perez doing the interiors of that stuff too. And I bought that stuff, so I was like, oh, you like you're the guy. So I showed him some stuff. Um, he liked what I, what I had, but of course I still had a ways to go. But I was kind of like almost there. So he said, I'm gonna let's keep in touch. Let's see how things go. And uh, we'll let you know what's happening. But at that particular point, two guys come walking in. It was Peter Laird and uh, uh, his other brother. Eastman. Yeah, Kevin Eastman. So we're shaking hands. And I had just saw the first book of uh, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It was very amateur you know, at, at the time. But it was what it was. So I saw the stuff. And I thought, thought to myself, I said, it's never going anywhere. You know, like it's, it is what it is. And next thing you know, it's just mega success. So what, what you learn is shut up because you never know what's going to happen. That And after that, um, that particular situation went, went past. Uh, I kind of lost touch with Brian for a bit. And then um, he hits me up. Uh, uh, in fact, I started working in the company in a, uh, in a place called, uh, uh, was it uh, A&S, uh, A&S Mall in Manhattan. Which is no longer there anymore, and I started working in a store called. Um, uh, it was a sneaker store called um, Athlete's Foot. So 
right down the hallway just happened to be a, a comic book shop, Jim Halen's Universe. And I went down and I'm having a chit chat with this guy. And I'm like, I didn't even know the store was here. And I'm having a chit chat with the guy who's at the register. And I'm telling about this guy named Brian that I, know, that I met when I was in high school. And I haven't heard from him in a while. And I was wondering what was going on. But, you know, he was putting out the really cool comics and stuff like that. And I wonder how he's doing. I hope he's doing okay. But I'd love to find out if he's still doing some stuff because I really want to be able to, you know, try to do some comics and stuff. And he goes, I'm Brian. I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> I was like, "Oh, how you doing?" He said, "Chris." So we just started talking, and then from there we just kind of, we just kind of kept this friendship. And he let me know as we were kind of putting stuff together. Um, I was doing some stuff for him, and he let me know about this company uh, full of African American men who are putting together a, a, a combo company called Milestones. And he said, uh, "It'd be really cool if you go check them out because um, they're looking for people." And they can always use a fresh face. And I think you're just about there, man. I mean, you, we've, I've been feeding your work and you've been getting bad with every single one of them. You can always use this stuff in order to, you know, kind of use this portfolio piece to show them what you can do, but you're good. And they should be able to, they should snatch you up right away. And I said, you think they'll just really just pick me up as soon as they see myself? You said, I have no problem with them thinking that you want, what, without you thinking that you're going to walk out with a book. So I went, I was going to school of visual arts at the time, which is like literally two blocks away, maybe three blocks away from where that studio was. So during a break, I went down there, took some stuff down there. Um, I walked in cold, let them know who I was, and um, said I had some work I would like to show them, see if I could be able to get a gig there. And um, uh, the receptionist was there, and there was Christine, office manager. She said, well, let me see your stuff, and I'll bring it to the guys in the back. And... Uh, and I let them see what was going on. Uh, back then, you know, you know, Dwayne McDuffie was alive then. So uh, there was Dwayne McDuffie, Dennis Cowan, uh, Michael Davis, and also um, uh, David, uh, excuse me, Derek, Derek Dingle. So at some point, these guys were coming out shaking my hand. I had no idea what was happening. But D Dwayne McDuffie shows up. He looks outside of his office door and goes back inside of his office. I'm like, who was that? So that's Dwayne McDuffie. I said, oh, that's Dwayne. Oh, he's a big dude. So uh, then Dennis opens up his door. He goes and walks into another office. Michael Davis comes out, shakes hands with me, goes back inside again. And then Derek Dean comes out and starts, starts shaking my hand. I'm like, what is happening here? And before I knew it, they were basically saying, uh, asking me if I had work yet. I said, no. I said, I'm coming in cold. I just found out you guys are you know, possibly taking people. He said, you haven't worked professionally anywhere in the industry. Yeah, you did this yourself. I said, yeah. He said, okay, we'll be right back. They disappear again. So eventually I wind up getting a gig at the end of it all. But, uh, you know, uh, that's basically how I walked into the industry. Like I had to hustle to, and, and basically it was just opportunities being presented my way and, you know, go to this guy and you go to this guy and it wound up, eventually I just wound up getting past the hustle and making my mark, you know, finally getting in that gig. So, and I think, I think I started on the first issue I started was Blood Syndicate 3. That was the first uh, real appearance of anything that I did, but I, I started doing a whole bunch of uh, superhero cards they were doing at the time. So um, it's, that was kind of like the proof process to see what I could do. And then once I gave them the pencil link version of that stuff, they was like, here, just take the book. Because they had uh, two guys doing the book, and I think I don't think they were going to stay on. So they were they're looking for... Uh, series R to take over, and I was actually in college at the time, so I had to make a decision. Do I stay with School of Visual Arts or just do this gig? And at one point, I tried to do both. That was, that didn't work. It was just too much stress. So I wound up sticking with that, and I'm here. So, Had you always been drawing? All my life. Writing and drawing. Coloring, painting, everything. So I was always adept. My mother and father was always adept to making sure that we were you know, our mind was being stimulated in some sense. But um, if it was music, you know, there's a lot of music and singing in, in, in my family. So uh, a lot of my father's a preacher. So uh, my mother was born uh, into a born again Christian household with a, a father being a pastor, her mother being, a, you know, first lady of the church. So it was something that was, you know, the singing and the, and the preaching and all that other stuff was always a big part of it. But she was always, always an advocate of making sure that we were always reading something, was always drawing something, stuff to keep us out of trouble. You know, we're talking from the 70s to the 80s. 
in the hood, so you want to make sure you stay out of trouble. So, and I did you I, take I, art classes? Was that? Did you take art classes? Uh, I took one art class, and that was with uh, Gene Colan when he was uh he was an FIT. A friend of mine who also had passed away, he was uh wanted to get into comics also, so we both uh, took the time uh to to put some money together. I found that Gene Colan was doing a class at FIT. And we both went to go check him out, see what it was all about. And, you know, it was a really great experience. And, um, he, you know, he put us through the ringer a bit, but, um, you know, he sort of figured that we both had a serious talent. So he wanted to see in the future how we would go. And I met Gene Cohen after that a couple of times. I think he might have kind of remembered remember me at the time, but uh, I think his wife was last there the last time I saw him. So um, he kind of remembered, kind of, you know. I'm probably one of the biggest black men he's ever seen, so <laughs> it's kind of hard to forgive me. So, but uh, you know, I told him I kept it going. I'm in the industry now, so you know, you know, he's like very thankful for that. But he always thought I was pretty good anyway at the time. So, and I, I just missed you on Blood Syndicate. I stopped after the second issue. I kept going. I was a big fan of. I was a really big fan of Static. I actually had mm-hmm. some let, letters in there. Um, which I, I have to say something because it, it pertains to Mike too, um, and uh, and I was a I really liked um, hardware too, <clears throat> mainly oh, yeah. because of the art. But I but I I, I I like that story too. But I was really into static, and um, I was one of the people they had a thing going on because um, they kept wondering um, they were trying to decide on him on uh, <clears throat> Virgil wearing a, a certain cap because they mm-hmm. started changing it a little bit. And yeah. um, and they were asking the readers <clears throat> what they thought. And I said, I said, well, one of the things I love that, that uh, Mike Barron does in the Badger comic was um, that they had different, he had, was the Badger also had like a camouflage outfit and he had yeah. like a winter outfit and stuff. Yeah. I, was like, sure. I was like, why yeah. can't he wear different caps? It was like, most people I know that wear caps wear different ones. I was like, I would just let him wear different ones. And then like right after that, I think somebody and somebody else did too. And we both had our letters printed in there. And then like every issue, he had a different hat after that. But mm-hmm. I mean, now, I mean, I understand the idea. That's that how brothers wear. are. They wear different caps. I mean, even to I, this day, it's, oh, it yeah. could, they could be wearing uh, a, a Boston Celtics cap, but be wearing like a green Bay shirt and they could yeah. be wearing like green, uh, green Nikes, you know? Yep. Yep. It's all about matching the Packers. Right. Okay, right. I should say, yes. yeah, that just <laughs> I feel like you going to show it. Yeah. <laughs> I should pick my big blue, man. I bought the Marvel shirt today, so. Yeah, that's a cool shirt, though. Yeah, thank you. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's awesome. What happened, um, so, yeah, I, I was reading a little bit about that, and, um, and I did, like, I remember when I saw um, your stuff, um, that really caught my eye was I liked your stuff on Captain Marvel. Um, mm. Cause it was an interesting look for him where he had kind of this cosmic in his face and everything. Mm. And, um, and I just really, I really dug uh, the way that you uh, drew him and like, in uh, I don't know, just some of the different poses and things like it was just, I don't know. It, it was super cool. And I, I really, I really dug that. Um, but later I did read up on blood syndicate just because I was trying to familiarize myself with, with the different things. And, uh, and I, and I was like, wow, that comic sounds intense. Um, it was intense. Yeah. I was like, uh, and I was wondering, like, are they, and I know, I, I know I, we're getting ahead a little bit here, but, um, I know you are supposed to be working on, um, uh, blood syndicate this year. I'm sure you've already started on it. Um, yeah, we, we're starting on it. Yep. Um, is it is it picking is it kind of picking up where it came, left off or are you guys retelling the original um, story? Well, I, I guess I'm going to gather that um, I'm still w- I'm waiting for certain things to come through, but uh, I guess I don't want to tell too much about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time. That's fine. But I think they're doing based upon what they're doing so far with Static and what they're doing with Hall, where they're, they're probably doing a slight reboot in order to, and I right. say reboot in a very very. Uh, Facetious way because yeah 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 because they kind of made, making it more you know tantamount to what's happening now right because you know? right. back then like blood syndicate was about gangs and 90s was about gangs and stuff like that and you know right. fight the power and all that other stuff 
And uh, now this is about like like BLM and that you know Antifa and all this other stuff that's going right. on. So some of the political uh, craziness that happened that's happening right now. So yes, yeah, it's, it's probably going to be in that vein, that particular type of vein. I don't want to give anything away, but yeah, yeah, no. Right. That's, Who's that's the cool. writer? Uh, it's going to be. It should be um, Jeffrey Thorne. He and I seem to be connected on a lot of stuff now. It's, just, it's pretty weird because. Uh, uh, we, I mean, I've already worked with him, um, some other stuff in the past, but definitely in the last, I will say two years, it was, uh, Vixen and the, uh, with the truth and justice stuff and, and, uh, some Green Lantern stuff that he's doing now, which is, he's like knocking it out of the park, crazy stuff. So, yeah, that looks, that yeah. looks really cool. I haven't, I haven't checked it out yet. Yeah. I mean, uh, Ivan Velez Jr. was the one who basically wrote the, the first, uh, 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 the first, uh, I guess, idiom, if that's the word you want to say, for of the right. uh, uh, the first generation of uh, Blood Syndicate. And he had some very, very, uh, uh, he was very, very uh, intense in the stuff that he put put together. But this right. is a guy who's like a child of a lot of uh, Chinese and Hong Kong cinema and a lot of right. anime. So, right. And definitely a lot of street knowledge. So uh, he was able to put a lot of stuff that a lot of people were not privy to. And uh, Dwayne McDuffie discovered him in uh, conventions. Also, he was writing his, uh, he's putting together a, a book called uh, Tales from the Closet because you know, he's a gay man. So right. he's telling a lot of stories about you know gay people in, in certain situations. I think it was more so 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 sort of like kind of like Archie, that kind right. of Archie esque kind of art style that he was using at the time. But this stuff has graduated since then, and. Um, it, I guess Dwayne McDuffie saw the, his writing ability. He's like, have you ever written anything before? Like, for, he's like, no. He said, except for his own stuff. He said, stuff was just so amazing uh, from the stuff that he read from the Tales from the Closet stuff. He said, you need to write this book. And he was just, they would just happen to be at the right place at the right time, just picking guys who were just very, very talented. And uh, it just happened to just merge together. When I saw um, Ivan's stuff, I saw a reading, and I was like, I think I can pull that. I can pull that off. I can pull that off. So, I mean, some of the craziest stuff that's happened in those books. I mean, I've actually tastefully had a, a character peeing on someone else in a panel. Right. So who does that? You know. Yeah. So, so I was able to pull that off and still got under the comics code. People don't know what the I, comics I was code gonna say, anymore. Yeah, yeah, that was that was when the comics code was still around. So we have our own fight with the comics code. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got my, I got my. Uh, I got my shirt oh, on here. Nice. We we got nice. we got it pulled down though, so and we got kicked off of T Public. So uh I, I'm really? I'm disputing it. Yeah, I'm disputing it. Because I, of the because of the, the, the design. Because of the design, the but it's like I didn't even use the same font. I didn't use anything. And I even put like our crowns at the bottom. Like mm -hmm. it's not the same at all. I'm like, I think I think they're uh, I think their robots are triggered. But Jeff, um, we should we should only we should get down on our knees and beg them to sue us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, that they don't, they don't, yeah, they don't care. No, but uh, no. had you, did you get it? Well, how did, but how did you discover we were kicked off? Because uh, they send you a letter. Oh, right, and in the from, mail. From their, email. Yeah, from their legal department. But I've heard from a lot of people. There's people that have done original art in, um, for their stuff, like 100 percent original, not copying anything put it mm -hmm. on there and then they got the same thing. Uh, and then you just, and it's just like certain things just trigger the, uh, the algorithms and, and, okay. the, and, the, and, the, and the robot things they have. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so, you know, it, that's why it's like, if you feel like this is wrong, then you need to dispute it. I'm like, I'm disputing it. It's like, this is ridiculous. And especially you can go on there right now. And I gave them examples. I made a list of all the people who just copy and pasted the original comics code and have it mm -hmm. on there. I was like, mm -hmm. at least mine is original. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm imitating it, but I'm not just copy and pasting it. They even, there's even somebody on there and I pointed out to, to them too. And it, just because when I was searching for the comics code stuff, it came up, there's a guy who posted a silver surfer cover by Mobius mm -hmm. on, on there on a shirt. And he doesn't right. have the rights to that. It's no, like, there's doesn't. no, it was like, there's no way. So like I I pointed him out. Okay. I was like, I was like, if you're going to complain about our thing, then you really need to deal with these people. And, it, you know, cause it's, I was like, this is, I don't know how these, these standards that some of these people do, especially like sometimes on YouTube or some, some other spot, like Instagram yeah. or some other spot, 
and they come at you with some other thing, but like right down in your own feed, they're doing the same thing. It's not worse. Right. But they're coming after you. And like, I'm not understanding that. Like, help yeah. me out here. I totally Hater. get that. It's annoying. Haters like to hate. Yeah, but I'm sure there's other spots you can go to other than Teespring. So. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There's there, yeah, there's a, there's a few other places. I, I've heard that other people have had trouble too. And some of it's just like I said. I think it's like a lot of things where a lot of I I, th- I bet they're understaffed and they're relying too much on technology that isn't the greatest. So mm-hmm. it, it, it's just triggered by anything that it thinks might be have some sort of copyright infringement. So. But yeah. yeah, this actually, yeah, this, and, and it was funny because this shirt actually came in the mail today and I was like, um, and I was like, oh, okay. I was like, I guess I squeezed this one in right before they got rid of us. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, some of my friends were teasing me about wearing contraband and stuff. So, contraband. but, uh, <laughs> but Chris, did you spend much time with McDuffie? A lot of time. Um, I used to make it a point to find out who he was. Um, when I was coming from School of Visual Arts to, 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 like, to kind of walk down, I would walk down two blocks to come meet the guys, kind of see how they were doing. I just wanted to see who would be kind of popping into the studio. Uh, a lot of times I caught Mark Bright, which was like awesome. He, he's literally the uncle you wish you had. And uh, he's a very, very smooth guy, very uh, low key, funny when he wanted to be, you know, but very intelligent, very pensive, um, very down to earth. Uh, Dwayne McDuffie, of course, was the big brother you wish you had. Um, uh, he and I basically kind of came from the same upbringing, so it was just an easy, an easy fix. And he would ask me certain questions about certain R&B and you know certain types of music, certain types of sports, because he was big into uh, basketball. And we used to always talk about what we do with each other in, like, on the court, which I thought was hilarious. I was like, dude, you know, I just, I would just dunk on you. He's like, yeah, if you were on your behind, yeah. you know, we'd do that kind of thing. So, yeah, I mean. Uh, he was a very intelligent man. Um, when he told me about uh, how his uh, his um, intelligence, his intelligence and his smart excelled him through uh, through school, how he was able to uh, able to go to college when he was thirteen, I think it was. Wow. Very very intelligent man. Very uh, into into sciences, uh, multiple sciences. I think it's one of was uh, physics, um, applied physics, or I want to say particle physics or something like that. He was definitely in, he was definitely deep into it. So some of the stuff that he would write was definitely some of the stuff that was actually real stuff he was just imparting into it. He taught me a lot about writing and being um advantageous about reading stuff and adding stuff that's not in comics into comics to make things more fresh. And um a lot of stuff he showed him about the business world when it comes to being a black man, having to uh, face certain uh situations in a in a medium that pushes a lot of uh that is basically used to a majority white audience or a white um, uh, uh, employment, I, I guess you want to say a freelance situation. Um, some things that, some pitfalls that will happen, some uh, successes you may have, how to deal with certain things. Um, being able to meet Derek Dingle, who's, um, you know, part of a, a black enterprise CEO. I think he's like CEO now. Uh, that, he's really up there now. So um, um, having that guy there, being able to, you know, kind of guys that tell you about certain things that have to introduce you to new opportunities. Uh, Dennis Cowan, who's, of course, another big brother, who always kind of punched me up whenever he uh, saw me doing certain things you know, art-wise. He, he always asked you why. Why are you doing that? Like, does that make sense? Do you have to do that? Does every panel have to scream out, yeah, ah, ah, you know, reach in, you know, crazy panels. Sometimes you need a little calmness, you know. And yeah, but if I do calm, no one's going to look at it. It's like, that's not true. Sometimes if you do everything that's just wiring, so that has so much energy to it, it becomes mundane because it's all like that. You have to be able to, right. you know, meter it. You know, he was always telling me that. Um, feed me stuff. Uh, feed me a bunch of uh, different um, artists that are out there um, who was able to basically be an example of what he was talking about, you know, uh, be able to learn from those guys, be able to learn how to tell a story first and be able to draw it better later. Which who, I also who, was a. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I was just going to ask who, who, like, who you were really into as far as like art style wise that you think might have influenced your style. Well, I was definitely into Jack Kirby, Sal, Sal and John Buscema. I was into John Byrne back in the days. I met the brother. <laughs> he's, he's he's a trip. Um, <laughs> Neil Adams. Uh, oh my God. Um, 
back in the days, I guess I got into the nineties, like Arthur Adams, Michael Golden was I, I was able to really like finally meet when I started working at Marvel. Um, oh man, a uh, lot of lot of Japanese uh, artists, a yeah. lot of European artists. Uh, I made it a point to like buy stuff from other countries to see what, what was going on going on over there. Yeah, to pull that stuff into my work. I don't want myself to look just like John Byrne because everyone was saying it was John Byrne, Terry Austin. That's, that's right. It's John Byrne, Terry Austin. I'm like, let's find something else to pull into this stuff. Yeah, and, you um, know, John Byrne is inimitable in my opinion. I've never seen anyone who draws like him. Yeah, he's he's, he's a very talented guy. I mean, his his uh, he definitely upped the ante when he started uh, writing and drawing. Um, but he was everywhere at some particular yeah. point. I mean, he was drawing maybe two or three books a month sometimes. Yeah. And I, I mean, I'm fast, but not that fast. How fast yeah. are you? Well, I've done, I managed to do two books in a month one time. And I decided I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> yeah. Did you ink yourself? Uh, at that time, no. But as I'm pencil inking myself from time to time now, it takes a lot longer. And plus, I'm slowly shifting back, shifting it to purely digital. I'm trying to yeah. find a, a happy medium. Because I don't want to do just pure digital because you have nothing to sell, but at the same time, yeah, you know, NFTs. You think about what's faster. Yeah, it's just I'm um, right now I'm kind of working with I I do the, the the old school style with playing around with Photoshop and stuff like that. You know, doing some yeah. digital stuff, some some digital, some uh some hand drawn stuff to kind of come up with some effects. I'm trying to look to tell the story a certain way, but you know, I'm about to break out the new Cintiq, so I'm about to see how that's gonna go. So. Nice. Yeah, we've been that. talking. We've been talking to some artists, and and I know some too that if um, if their pencils are tight, that they've just gone straight from pencils to like doing color coloring. If they if they color their own stuff, but mm. um, but uh, what are you doing now for like? Because uh, you recently did some issues of Static, right? The new Static. Yeah, I was working. Uh, I was doing the Truth and Justice stuff, and then I was doing some other stuff that I was uh, that I'm actually finishing up. For another company um and then i got hit by dennis kyle who was telling me you know my uh dc trying to hit you up and i'm like for what like we want you to do some static stuff i'm like what well i don't see no email you know yeah so oh let me go talk to chris i uh, will be right back and then of course the emails came through so they wanted me to do <laughs> uh layouts uh there's a new uh, artist come they, they brought in from uh, i think dennis found from uh instagram a name uh nicholas Draper Ivy, yeah. uh, very, very talented guy. Uh, definitely doing a, uh, his version of anime, anime ish, uh, style work. Um, right. he's basically, you know, he's in that full digital mode. So he's working on an iPad for the most part. And that pro is no joke. Um, and he's been doing some really cool stuff with that, but they wanted someone that was going to help him kind of acclimate to a certain storytelling style, because, you know, if you're doing right. nothing but straight anime or straight manga. There's a certain way they tell a story that mm -hmm. may or may not work a certain way in America, you know, to the American aesthetic. So I now I'm, try, I'm very fluent in that. So that's yeah. another thing Dennis is always bustling me about. That I looked at manga so much, I was actually starting to draw from right to left, except from left to right. You know, he was <laughs> like, "You need to stop, dude. You need to stay in America for a bit." <laughs> so he put you in rehab. He put me in rehab. He's like, "No, look, look, look at this now. Just, just stay away from that." <laughs> So, you know, but, it, you know, I've been doing this for a long time and they needed someone to help acclimate him into it because he's done a lot of uh, illustration stuff with pretty good stuff with that, but he never really did a lot of uh, continuity stuff. So yeah. they wanted to show him how to be a good storyteller, but they needed me to kind of guide him in first and then kind of let him go afterwards. I was supposed to do the first, all six, but it was basically uh, they had already finished setting up the whole Blood Syndicate stuff, so I left after four. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Cause I, so you've but I was here in my layouts weren't really layout, so. Right. You know, I was like, they say, dude, you're drawing a book. I'm like, dude, these are layouts. These are not, these are not sketches, guy. You can ink this stuff. You know, Has your yeah, work yeah. on the new Blood Syndicate appeared? Not yeah. yet. It, it's in progress now. It's starting. I already did uh, some cover stuff for them, so we're just about, you know, we're literally starting to uh, put some stuff together now, so. But it's just layouts. Well, the layouts were for a static. For static. Yeah, stuff, so you're, right. You're the fully I'm fully drawing this. Yeah. Yep. When is that coming out? I think it's April or May. Yeah, they so just started promoting it. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's, yeah. I think it's around April, late April, maybe early May, something like that. Yeah. 
Yeah, you've done some work for Dark Horse. Yeah, I did a, a book called Bank Shot. Yeah, that that was a very good. Uh, that was a really cool story. I know. Uh, I collected I, those. I have them around here somewhere. Yeah, they finally put out the trade paperback. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. So that 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 book didn't have a when they I guess something happened where sales got kind of messed up, and then um, issue five never came out. So um, they put issue five in, in the bundle version of uh, Bank Shot. I actually um, I don't even know if you're gonna remember. I think um, didn't you do a a little bit of stuff or help with something for? Um, I hope this isn't gonna be a bad memory <laughs> um, for for Big City Comics. Yeah, in yeah. Tampa, I'm in the Tampa area. I actually have a couple of artist buddies who used to work with Big City. Oh, okay. But, yeah, I yeah. did the uh, the ta to tainted stuff. It's called oh, tainted. Okay. Yeah, it, they, that that was a trip. Um, yeah. I think I did. Uh, how many issues of that did I do? Maybe three or four. Maybe about three or four issues of that, and. I wanted to do more for it. I think it had more, like, some serious potential to it, but uh, I guess the writer um, didn't uh, agree. So yeah. I said, okay, it's just, I'm just going to get this stuff done and then uh, get it done. I did all that stuff with full pencil, wow. no inks. So that, that was it. But I use that as a way, you know, to try to push myself to another level. Right. You know, I wanted to try some new stuff. So I use that in order to have perfection things. And I yeah. think I kind of did. So when I was able to do other stuff, it would just seem like the normal thing to do. But uh, every project, I'm always trying to trying to get myself up another level. Anyway, I don't want to get bored or you know start getting kind of cakey with the stuff. You know, you get older, you get sometimes kind of gets kind of oh, yeah. stale. Yeah. Have you gotten a chance to write anything professionally? I a couple of times I almost did, but it kind of fell through. And I rather I figured I might as well save that stuff for my own stuff. Yeah. Some of the stuff you're, I actually you're inking wanted to your pitch own pencils. You're inking yourself on Blood Syndicate, right? No, I want it. Would, be, it would take too much time. Who's the inker? That's going to be Juan Castro, I think. It should be Juan Castro. He he inked me on the uh, uh, on the stuff. Uh, what was it? So some stuff in Static when I did a couple of pages there, but he did the uh, the Milestone Zero stuff. Well, you must be happy with the inks. Oh yeah, he's really good. I've lately yeah. I've been really getting some really great anchors, so um, I've had a lot of good fun. You know, uh, Terragana is another person. Uh, Terragana, Terragana Garcia, he's a very good anchor. Um, uh, he inked me on the Truth and Justice stuff, the, the Vixen stuff. So uh, I have a plethora of anchors I've been able to kind of get in touch with when I really need to get some stuff done, and they just kind of came through. So they push That's me awesome. to another level. It's awesome stuff. So. Your Vixen stuff looks really good too. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't read it yet. But when I was going over everything, I was like, I was like, man, it's like his Vixen stuff looks looks good. Yeah, I I still beat myself over that stuff. It's just like the only thing you could have done better. But uh, uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, you know how it goes. It's that the cycle clown in your head. You know? Yeah, you're never good enough. You're gonna die and never being better. He's like whatever. Like just get it done. <laughs> Yeah, but I had fun with that stuff though. Me and Jeff, uh, that that was a funny story. That 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 particular uh, project because someone was talking about on Twitter about that they need Vixen in their life. So I said, that's funny. So I said, I've always wanted to draw a Vixen. Someone goes, it'd be really cool if you could draw a Vixen. And then Jeffrey Thorne said, yeah, it'd be cool if I could write it. And I said, you know what? Let me let me go ask somebody about that. And I said, I'll be right back. So literally, as soon as I saw that, I hit up some people at DC. It was Andrew Moreno. Yeah. And I said, are you guys doing anything with Vixen? He goes, I don't think so. You want to do something with Vixen? He goes, I think so. What do you got in mind? I said, me and Jeffrey Stone <laughs> like to draw some issues that bad boy. He goes, hold on. I'll be right back. And he goes, he's like, I'm gonna, literally going to ask somebody right now what's happening. He said, okay, let me get back to you. Literally about two days later, he's saying, let's do it. Nice. And I said, Jeffrey, we're doing Vixen right on, on Twitter. He goes, we're what? <laughs> we're doing, like, what do you mean? I said, dude, I just finished talking to him. <laughs> they said, let's do it. I said, That's he awesome. said, are you making this up? I said, no. I'm going, Andrew Marino wants to talk to you about five minutes. Yeah. So it just came out of something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, Has that's that material appeared? 
Yeah. Say again. And has that material appeared? Yeah. Is that? Has it been released? The, oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Stuff. Yeah. yeah, that's what stuff has been out, and I think it started digitally, and then it came out as a book, and it, a I think it was the yeah. first three, the first three uh, truth and justice books, it was like ten pages of each. Uh, it was done thirty pages, but they did broke them into three spots, right. and they kind of I think it was multiple stories in one particular book, and this one was a feature story. And one, the name so, of the book is Truth and Justice. Truth and Justice, and it should be a what do you call it, a trade paperback now. Yeah. So it's all collected, and I'm sure a, there's a backed version of it somewhere on Comicsology somewhere, right? Unless DC is still putting it out exclusively through, uh, I guess, through the Comicsology engine. Yeah. Well, you know, Chris and I almost worked on a, a project which was an adaptation of my uh, novel Biker. And Chris, uh, by the way, a, a producer just took out an option on that property, so mm. keep your fingers crossed. Uh, and Jeff, uh, uh, Chris did a, a cover, and I just posted it in your Facebook messenger. Okay. If you want to take a look at that, I don't know if you can put that up on the screen here. Yeah, probably. Don't yeah, that was kind of kind of working on its way, and then I forgot there was a lot of stuff happening, and I don't know what, why. No, nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. <laughs> and, yeah, and, and uh, I think he was trying to get it out there, and no one's really picking up on it. But you know how it goes. It blows up and then everyone's gonna want it. You know how it goes. I thought it's a yeah. cool concept. Oh, we still might do it. Uh, you, you never know. We can see what what, I'm open, what happens. I mean, I'm in a much all... better position now. Okay. To get Did things you get, done. You met Bezos. He gave you some cash. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't mean Bezos. <laughs> Bozos. It's just the way he said it. I'm in a better better position now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I, I mean that uh, I you're publishing independently and doing very well by that. But uh, I still have ties to some companies like Allegiance. Mm, yeah. I just finished a, a six issue run on on uh, the Saints, which just came out. It has not appeared in the Walmart yet, so oh, okay. I have a copy of that book here. Somewhere. Are you putting? Are you a publisher through uh, Amazon? Uh, no. Uh, I'm not publishing anything through Amazon, but all my books are on Amazon. My publisher is now Wolfpack. I'm okay. on my third publisher for Biker. Okay. Uh, and they're great. They've been very supportive. Okay. That's awesome. I'm trying to put some stuff out myself, hopefully by the, by the middle of this year. It's something I've been working together. We're working on for about a good 11 years. So You mean uh, a comic? Kind of, it, it kind of expanded that way with all the stuff that's happened in between when I first started, but Hopefully by this this year things stop. You know, I dare to do some Kickstarter stuff on it. I don't want to say see yet, that. But I'd love yeah. to see it. I'll let you see it. I think it's a really cool right. concept at first, and it'll be the beginning of many things I'm going to continue to keep putting out. I've been doing this for a while. It's time to break off some stuff for myself that I should own my own on my own. You know, can't just be for T and Marvel. So, are you writing it? Uh, I'm actually. I did did most. I did the creation of it. Um, but we're going to be um, pairing up with a, uh, a really good writer named Vito Del Sante. He did uh, Stray, a book called Stray some, uh, some time ago. Uh, that was published through, I want to say, uh, Action Lab. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's a really cool concept. It, you know, he did a great job with it, but he and I have been kind of working on this thing for a while. And uh, it should have come out earlier, but I got sick at some particular point. It was kind of slowed everything up. And then you know, you know, coming back together slowly, but surely coming back and trying to make things work. Um, now I'm on a course to finally finish a preview version of it, so I can finally use that as a way to kickstart that bad boy up. Excuse me, and um, you know, finally get that bad boy out, out in the ether. It'd be a great start to some stuff I want to put. I, I need to have a legacy back here, you know, so stuff I want to have my name on. Well, it's a great time yeah. to, for IPs too. A lot of uh, other comp companies and different things are looking to buy up IPs or to whatever lease them. Jeff, right. can you put biker cover up on the screen? I am, I am, I am working hard at it. <laughs> I think I think I, I, can do, you know? I, I will be. I will be able to soon. Here, let's see. More than I can do. Slides new. To share screen, maybe. Um, they're making this better, but I'm still. You know, uh, Dennis and I worked on Badger. Dennis illustrated some Badger. 
McCowan? Yeah. Why don't I remember that? Well, I think I got, that, every, uh, I got every single badge that existed. I collected all the stuff you wrote. Uh, uh, it was a, uh, uh, a separate run, uh, I think. I have to go back and dig that up. Was it with first? Oh, yeah. Oh. Huh. Oh. Hmm. So it was like a mini series then? Yes. He did the whole series? Oh, no, it's just one issue. Oh, one issue? Oh. I thought it was what cool Badger was changing personalities. We had a different artist for every issue. Yeah, I did a couple uh, for you for that, and I had fun doing that one. It was cool to finally draw Badger. That's Larry. Right. <laughs> yeah, I just, just love that character. Uh, uh, Nexus was awesome. Oh, oh, there you go. There it is. There you go. Right, yeah. <laughs> right over our guest. <laughs> yeah that was uh i forgot who there's a couple of guys i wanted to use for that character but uh uh who did i settle on i'm trying to remember there's a i tried um there's a british book a british actor i was jason up, statham. jason statham right uh yeah. statham was one uh i don't think he kind of worked out but i went for the it was the, the other brother from um uh who is a supernatural play the father before he passed away on the show. Uh, but he's on uh, Walking Dead too now. With the beard. Oh, I, I know who you mean. Uh, my brain is farting today, man. Um, yeah, to me, when I saw it, I was like, he's the perfect guy, cat to play that character. Um, Dag Nabbit. Hmm. I always thought uh, Statham was perfect for Biker. You're thinking of Jeffrey Dean Morgan. That's him. That's yeah. why you, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Yeah. Do you, kind of do, you like, do you like to use actors and actresses for your uh, characters that you draw? Uh, sometimes it, it's it's about a, a a spirit of it. Like you know, yeah. you look at a certain person. You look. You, basically, when I look at the character, I say to myself, "What's the energy coming from this character, and right. how I think that character will look?" I may not use a a known person at all. I may use some somebody I saw just walking down the street, just stopping like, "Can I take a picture of you?" And they go. Why? I was like, I'm an artist. You could be your face. You could be the face of a comic book. They go, oh, okay. You know, sometimes I've seen people on Facebook or Instagram. I've paid people um, a certain amount of money, like a little business transaction. Like, right. you send me a certain amount of faces. I pay for e for each uh, image, and give a, a good, uh, you know, a nice small amount of money for it. They're usually yeah. willing to do it. Uh, yeah. The woman, there's a woman uh, from um, Venezuela. Her name is your analyst. Very beautiful woman. She's um, after was the face of uh, one of the characters in Bait Shot. In fact, her, on the cover, of the second one, uh, was, it's literally her face. Uh, yeah. She had made her uh, the, the characters from Somalia, but it's okay. You can make any anyone look black if you want them to. <laughs> right, right, yeah. You know, but she looked. She had the features. She had you know the same type of lips, the nice thin nose, the nice thin eyes, beautiful hair, just like. She, she could pass for Somalia, why not? You know, I mean, to make it happen. So uh, yeah. I put it together. Uh, I think Shaw Montbro is the uh, the face that I use for uh, for the character, main character in Bank Shot. Yeah. I he often cast my characters. It's a good way, uh, it's a shorthand way to, to indicate to the illustrator the type of person you have in mind. I'll right. say, you know, Gary Grant or, or Humphrey Bogart or whatever. Mm -hmm. I just think it kind of ties a certain amount of realism to the work and yeah. it, it kind of you know plays with a person's imagination a bit when they can actually look at a particular character that character and say i've kind of seen that guy before that girl before even if they never, yeah. never really seen it people love it when you use classic cinema characters in your book if they recognize them they love it mm -hmm. it's kind of like that game like i've seen that guy somewhere you used yeah. this didn't you you know so they kind of know what, what the process is like you know it's never yeah. just something you just, you know, I rarely, you just create a face out of thin air and say, that person look like this. And then I'll take an eye from here or uh, eyebrow from there or ear from there or something like that and just kind of make it up as I went along. So a lot of times I look at the structure for a particular person's face and say to myself, that person could fit that character. It just makes it easy for me. It's just, you know, you can kind of, you know, you have something to kind of draw off of so that each character looks different no matter what. You know, otherwise you keep drawing the same face over and over again. 
more different hairstyle, you know. There are some artists who do draw the same face over and over again. And one of them is uh, Barry Windsor Smith. I love his art. I can never yeah. get enough of it. Uh, but his faces are instantly identifiable. And there, there's a certain similarity, or there used to be a certain similarity among all of them. I haven't looked at that new book, Monster, yet. I haven't seen that either. Did he do that? Yeah, it's in all the bookstores. It's, it's like this thick. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know he was still drawing. Yeah, well, it I took seen him years. Him at, at, yeah, if it's that thick, yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But his, Barry Windsor Smith stuff was always more technique over uh, and, and style over doing anything that was... Um, I guess you would say realistic, if that's a word yeah. you can use with the yeah. word. Oh, yeah. stuff is just so yeah. amazing, you don't even care. So Right. He, he uh, and Buscema were kind of opposite sides of the same coin when it comes to Conan. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. John Byrne had drew every face pretty similar, too. That's yeah. true. Yep. It was, yeah, he had, uh, basically a stock face that he would use, and he just use different types of hair and use yeah. the same type of hairstyle style going, going forward. Just change yeah. the color of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but uh, who else? Um, didn't Val Mayerick do a, do a uh, Conan at one point? Yeah, in fact, he did with me. Oh, there yeah. you go. Yeah, I, uh, I, I can, I'll post the, uh, the cover uh, to Jeff's page. I was just talking to Val today because he called me and he said, what's going on? Just, Chris just phoned me or talked to me and and uh, I said, relax, Phil, because we already recorded his his uh, his so his episode. But funny enough, I'm a, I'm a lot. You had me spit in my kombucha because um, I told you that I was talking to Val. Sent me some sort of some sort of, like an email or some sort of saying something was wrong with his horse. And he goes, don't worry about. It. We are already um, interviewed him already. I'm like, well, is he talking about the horse? Is he talking about <laughs> Val Mary? But the way it was worded it was like. Don't pay enough, no crazy. He's crazy. Don't worry. We already interviewed him. I'm like the horse. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Like, because I didn't even really say Val too much. I was just talking about the horse. Yeah. He said, we interviewed him already. Don't worry about it. I'm like, well, what? He's crazy about that horse. He's always yeah, been a horse guy. He plays polo. Oh, okay. Which, and which, and speaking of. He's speaking with a team, at, too? Is he on a yeah. team? No, no, no. He used to be. Oh. Oh. He, he said he used to be, but it got too expensive. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, and speaking of talking animals, do you guys uh, still have the uh, some talking animals in Blood Syndicate? I I don't know that I don't know. I'm pretty sure he, uh, dog you talking about the, yeah the, the dog yeah the double G yeah yeah I thought was, yeah we um I don't know I, I we're still working a lot of stuff out. But, Mike um, Mike and I are both dog people, so that's that's why I was asking. Yeah, I just got a dog too, uh, named Rocket. It's a uh, border oh, collie. Nice. So yeah, he's nice. a trip too. So yeah, I, I would believe. I'm trying to figure out what his voice would be like. If he would say something to me. Can you bring Rocket in? Put yeah. him up on the screen. Yeah. Can Can we talk to Rocket, please? Oh, he's, he's knocked Rocket? out. He's <laughs> that's, that's what... Yeah. Because we we ran like crazy today. So you have to border collie. Just have to, have to really wear them out. I know. Oh, they're yeah. Great dogs. Yeah, they're yeah. Just everywhere. He's had. He needs a job. If not, he's just into everything. <laughs> yep. that's right. Yep. Mm. yep. Yep. Did you uh, has uh, Did you get him before you moved, or did you get him? After? Well, we yeah, we got him before we moved. Um, what happened was like yeah. uh, my wife's cat passed away, and of course, uh, it was. I don't even think we had planned on getting a dog right away, but then something came up. My wife had already set up a situation where a dog was coming in. I was like. I was kind of thinking, like, don't you want to kind of <laughs> deal with the cat situation first, kind of get past that? But she was like, no, I want the dog. I said, well, I'm doing it for you. <laughs> okay. So yeah. I said, all right. I said, she said, what kind of dog you want? I said, border collie. She said, those are expensive. I said, border collie. <laughs> also because I know it's going to make me move more. So, And I'm doing that anyway. So that's something, right. you know, dogs kind of keep you energized. So he's yeah. definitely full of it. He's definitely got a lot of energy. So. Um, Are you in the city? Totally one of the smaller breeds. Uh, urban esque, you know, it's not in the, like in the downtown area where there would be tall buildings and stuff like that, but definitely um, in a very sprawling place. Nice. Very uh, diverse. I was just going to say, my wife was born in uh, Elizabeth, New Jersey. Oh, okay. That's not too far from so, me. That's Ikea yeah. town. 
Yeah. It's like, it's just, I mean, I don't know what it's like now. I know it was rough back then, but I guarantee you, it was nothing like the way it was when you when you were here. Yeah, it's totally different. <laughs> yeah, because even now, when I go to places downtown, even in my own neighborhood, I'm like, when did that building get built? It was like I was yeah. just here like five days ago. It's already here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You just never know. They're always building something new around here. A lot of corporate housing is kind of yep. showing up around here. So yeah, well, so we're up to Mike. Um. Well, uh, we're about to start the campaign for Florida Man graphic novel number two. Mm. Uh, Florida Man is a novel that that uh, I wrote for uh, uh, Wolfpack, and they specialize in, in thrillers and men's adventure stories and hard-boiled crime. Uh, and I, I sent this the manuscript to the publisher. I said, do you know anybody who might want to publish this? It's a humor novel. And he read it and came back right away. He says, we'll publish it. And, and, I don't uh, know why I was thinking that Florida Man was being published by Aftershock. I don't know why I thought that was. You know, I, I could have yeah. saw an Aftershock well, tag. Well, it's, this is a novel, Chris. It's a novel. Oh, I was say, like, because I know you know, it's, it's a graphic novel, too. Right. It's very confusing. Right, yeah. Uh, you know, I will send you uh, the cover to the graphic novel, too. It's the same illustration we had on the novel. Uh, but uh, we use it for the graphic novel, too. And then I wrote two more novels, and now we're about to start the crowdfunder for the second graphic novel, which is even funnier than the first. Uh, but it's just laugh out loud stuff. And the reason I wrote it is every time I went online, there was a new Florida man story. And, you know, some of them are indelible. I, and these are real headlines. Florida man claims syringe found in rectum is not his. Yeah. Oh, my God. Florida yeah. man defecates on traffic from light pole. <laughs> And uh, that's so Florida, funny, Florida. Florida. That's that's not my Florida, man. <laughs> <laughs> Who <one> accused you? <laughs> <laughs> Anytime There's something one. happened to Florida, we kind of go, okay. I admit it. That's Florida. Yeah. Yeah. No yeah, one's surprised. In, in fact, there's a site called FloridaMan.com which uh, gathers all these stories together, and there there are thousands of them. Thousands of them. And you pay them money, right? Because since oh, you still no, have I never paid them a dime, but I did send them a, 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 the, a copy the link to the book, and they put it uh, up on their site. So, Chris, right. if you look at uh, look at your Facebook Messenger right now, you'll see the covers. The first yeah, I'm looking at. Right I see him riding a warhog, um, yeah. bloody red, bloody red Baron comics. <laughs> so I think it's hilarious. What's this one? And this time, this one, he's riding an alligator. Yeah, that's an iconic image. People love yeah. that. Yes, you'll be riding a zebra next. Yep. Uh, or capybara. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It might be a cassowary, which is a big animal. It's a big bird, like a uh, like yeah. an eagle, only, only meaner. Uh, but I'm thinking about the fourth Florida Man novel, and it's going to be called Bull Weevil. Bull Weevil. Gary invents a car that runs on cotton, and that's why it's called the <laughs> okay. Bull Weevil. So I'm thinking of having Gary on the cover writing a giant bull weevil. Mm -mm -mm. Isn't that um, a, a bug? Yeah, it eats cotton. Yeah. It nearly wiped out the cotton crop. Oh, okay. Yeah. I guess. Uh, a lot of people may not get that, though. They don't know what a bull weevil is and what well, it does. I'll They're explain like, it to them. I'll explain yeah. it to them. But, the, you know, sure. the challenge with Florida Man is to put him in the most humiliating situation I can derive. It, it was, uh, he had to work himself out of it? Or well, he just has to it. be in it. In, oh. in the last book I turned in, <laughs> it was uh, the Duke and Duchess of Essex, which I call oh, okay. the Duke and Duchess of Ducats, which, you know, is, is uh, Prince Harry and and, uh, and Megan. I, I, yeah. I have them going to Florida to look at swampland property, and I, I drag them through the swamp. It's pretty funny. I just do everything I could to humiliate those characters and people love it. Yeah. So, so, okay. So you, my so you don't, needs a hug. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's, that's his therapy is taking, taking all his stuff out on that character. Oh yeah. Well, that's what writer, that's why writers write Jeff. Am I right? <laughs> Get that stuff yeah. out. So it's not sitting around in our head. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So uh, you don't know exactly when, but it is definitely, it's coming out in 2022. On uh, the new Blood Syndicate stuff, right? I, and as they told me, at the first issue, maybe around April or May. Yeah, 
late April or early May, something like that. Very cool. Uh, do you, you have, uh, a, you have yeah. a website where people can see your art? Um, right now, um, I'm actually re actually rebuilding one, but they can go to my they go to my Facebook page, which is uh, it's going to say Chris Williams, but it's right. also crisscross in parentheses. Um, right. They could go to my Instagram, which is at Chris at Chris crisscross Rex. I was like, Chris Ross, E R X, it's one, one or the other. I uh, sometimes I get it confused. Um, I also have a, um, what do you call it, a, a blog that's uh, called uh, Chris Cross of, uh, the Chris Cross of fan page, I think it is. Chris Cross yeah. of blog. Uh, they can check that. It's Chris Cross of blog .net. Um, They can check that out also. Um, it's kind of, I'm kind of like, all, I'm also on Twitter also. That's at Chris List. Unless I change it again, I never know. I'm always <laughs> off the place. So, but yeah, um, I also have a, a, a fan page on 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 uh, Facebook, also, which is also the Crisscross of fan page. So, yeah, um, there's a lot of stuff. Kind of, I usually put uh, any new stuff. I usually go through the fan page. But I really need to update that that blog though, because I've been doing so much work. I haven't had time to really just sit down and write and put stuff up there. But uh, soon there'll be a. Uh, uh, of uh, uh, websites when that's going to actually house all that stuff, and also one for the company stuff that I'm putting together for that other for the stuff we're going to uh, push this year. That's what we call Eternal Kick. Cool. I'm yep. looking at your blog right now. Yeah, I looked at it uh, yesterday, I think. And I know nice. Milestone has their uh, infrequent, like like a lot of companies, uh, their their website that is updated every once in a while. Mm -hmm. where they where they post some stuff up there yep yep it's it's just really cool to find out that uh uh some years ago that they were going to continue to keep pushing um pushing the aesthetic on those characters i just thought it would be like kind of a waste just kind of have them do what they had to do in the 90s and then i come right. back somehow so right uh well dennis back in the back in 17 i think it was he was showing me some stuff that was going to come through it was going to be called plan m i thought at first but um, they went to some other stuff, some other names, but they decided, I guess, went with Milestone Returns and Milestone, yeah. DC Milestone. Um, when that stuff started coming through and they found that Reggie Hudson wanted to be down with it, I was like, let's do it, man. You know, make it nice. happen. So I said, you guys need my help, let me know. So yeah. they let me know. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I, li I like Milestone stuff a lot. Um, yep, uh, definitely. It definitely. I think uh, DC is a hole that DC needed to fill, yeah. and um, is doing is doing a good job. Yeah, and and I'm really proud to see that, even though like maybe 30 years ago that stuff came out and they're still relevant, that people are so really into it that it, it never really lost the steam. In fact, it's kind of creating new steam on top right. of steam already had. So, and they had the compendium yeah. that's out also, the Marvel compendium. That you know, that's putting out maybe yeah. I think it's like yeah. five issues of each uh, of the four yep. books that came out, and yeah. some of that stuff that I did was in there also. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna bring that up too because I know that's supposed to be coming out soon, um, if it hasn't already. Um, it, I but, think I, they sent me a free one, but um, I was hoping more than one. But you know, me being greedy, but yeah. um, you know, I, I could be out already. It should be out already. Yeah, it, it's uh, yeah, but that'll that, yeah, it's called the um, just for people <laughs> if they didn't catch it, it's the milestone compendium or whatever. Um, and That's it does thick. have, yeah, it's thick. Um, it yeah. Does, I don't think the price is really that bad though for, for how much you for how much you get. Yeah, um, it's got to be like it's almost like 200 300 pages almost. It, feel, it feels yeah. like it anyway. So yeah. It's like 49 bucks, I think it is. Yeah, but it's I have to, um, I have to check it. And it's and it's good stuff. I mean, I just, yeah, I, I like it because it's good quality. I mean, good quality art and good quality um, writing. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I was like, you know, I I didn't get I didn't get hung up on uh, a lot of the not that there was anything relevant about it, but I didn't get hung up on the race stuff. Uh, I was just like, I, I don't as long as it's good quality. I don't I don't care. What color the people are, or or whatever what, else. The the race stuff, you know, it's as if people say the race stuff. Yeah, it's. Just, I mean, it's just something that it's sort of like. I mean, this is what's happening in this neighborhood. 
Right. But it's not, I mean, of course, it's also pushing the aesthetic that, you know, black people have stories they want to tell. It's not just about black people, though. I think one of the misnomers that people had about milestones that was just about black people. And right. it wasn't, he wanted, they wanted to do a people of color, like people, like whether you're Irish, whether you're uh, right. uh, Japanese, whether you're from Brazil, whether you're from Indochine, whether, I mean, yeah. everyone comes from a particular place and they have a story they need to tell. And it should tell, tell the story within that culture. And if you happen to be in an urban setting where all that stuff kind of happens, you just happen to be Chinese in a black neighborhood. This is some right. of stuff that they're going to go through in this, in this, in this hood. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. So when the people come together, have to be able to, uh, you know, coagulate in one particular area, you know, yeah. it's going to, it's going to have, things are going to pop off one way or the other. So yeah, it's yeah. A, it makes some good storytelling if you know what you're doing. So, um, that should be the same way that it happens in, in the new milestone stuff that's coming out too. And right. they've been kind of doing it with such ease, I want to say, for a long time. I think a lot of people tried to uh, try to copy it in a lot of ways and didn't really yeah. understand where it was coming from because you kind of have to be there to, you know, to be able to extrapolate it and put it out into the public. So right. um, I think they did a good job with that. It told great stories. It held up against a lot of new stuff that came out and it continued to uh, set a path for itself that um, eventually made a mark for itself. They're pretty much yeah. iconic um, in a lot of ways. And now that it's back, people are kind of yeah. looking at it thinking like, how did I miss this stuff? So yeah. I think that there should be more than one compendium coming. So they can yeah. kind of acclimate everyone into it. I think you guys will get more interest too once the, uh, uh, for anybody that doesn't know, there's an animated movie coming out too. Mm -hmm. um, that they're that they're working on. I know. I know. There's like a live action static that's in. Yeah, the works. I think Michael B. Jordan kind of. I think he's producing it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And um, but uh, yeah, I know that the and the milestone. Um, I don't even know if they have a name for the animated thing yet, but I know it's a. I know it's a mixture of several of the different sit, um, series and everything to kind of tell a story with a lot with several different milestone characters, which will be cool. I mean, that'll be a good introduction for people that aren't familiar with it but yeah yeah I, I can't wait to see what they do with it i hope it's really good stuff because uh i doubt don't i don't want them kind of cheesing on that stuff i want them to really put their foot in that and their work it's gotta yeah. look really good so yeah I'm sure they're gonna have dc animation have something to do with it so it's gonna look good yeah they've done they've done good stuff and i gotta say i'm kind of i'm, I'm kind of a uh a, a logo and font nerd um and i and i really like the um I really like the uh, logos and stuff they've been doing for the new milestone stuff. I think that mm -hmm. looks really sharp. I, I, yeah. I hated when they changed the blood syndicate logo. I did not like the new logo. They did <laughs> back, back, in, back in the day where the syndicates really big and, 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 and weird, but oh, was I, it, I like, done, it was done. like feel like in like a graffiti style. I'm talking about because yeah. there was three different versions to it. There was it was like the second version that they had where blood was like written really small and then syndicate was really big. Oh, that I'm gonna tell you a story about that one. I did that. Oh <laughs> boy. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So what happened was they're looking for a new logo and I did um a, a hand drawn version of it. Yeah. I did that by hand. So they when they put that together, they said they need something quick. So I said, okay. I'll put something together. You choose which one you want, and uh, I'll put it together. They chose that one, the one you hate. <laughs> I mean, hey, I, I don't care because it, it, it. I mean, they used it for a it, while. It became it became iconic as far as yeah. I'm concerned because people yeah. saw that as what it, I mean, you know, saw Blood Syndicate. It was a thing that kind of grabbed you out, your eye because of yeah. the angles, you know. Yeah. But, oh yeah. You know, but you're like yeah. the one that's coming. I just out think it should be clean. I, I just thought it should have been cleaned up a little bit. I like I liked the, the idea, uh -huh. but but yeah. You see how Ray turning right now? So, so anyways. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. Fuji yesterday. That's a uh... stink. You know why? He said, "I got a story where I made that food." <laughs> oh. that's that awesome but yeah but yeah um that was back in the days when people did hand drawn stuff i just wanted to prove right. myself i could do a logo and yeah. then people buy into they would like it so yeah but it happened for everyone except you <laughs> I, <laughs> you know i'm gonna keep you with it now. <laughs> i know i know i know hey, it's all right, hey. but you know the the second the third one i think some people a lot of people didn't like it because it was too 
on the nose, like just because their games has got to have a good right. look to it, you know. Yeah. But um, the yeah. first one was pretty cool, I guess. It for the I, first eight issues, I think it was. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. 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 But, See, dang like, it. We'll see how it goes. Well, well I, I got news for you. I didn't do the new one. So okay, so you'll like this I'll, one. Yeah, I like that good. one. That's good. Yeah. All right. That's... <laughs> no. Okay. It's all good. So well, I, think, I guess I think you're breaking. I think off. also one other thing I'm doing also is that they're doing yeah. um they're doing something a mentorship program for for milestone for the uh, for oh, the cool. kids. Uh, again, I just for for a new artist coming in. Yeah. And uh, they want. I think they're going to be doing it from late February to April. I think it is. So are they um the milestone initiative that's okay. going to bring in um uh, new writers and, and new artists. And it doesn't necessarily have to, I don't think it's necessarily a situation where it's just about people of color, just uh, new people. I'm sure there's a lot of people of color getting getting into it. But oh, I think it's all, I think it's, I'm, pre, I'm pretty sure it's probably going to be purely people of color because they want to try to, uh, you know, pulling more people uh, of color into comics. That's yeah. going to pull in great stories and stuff. So, you know, I get to look, you know, kind of overlook a lot of that stuff and kind of usher in a new uh, wave of talent. So that'd be cool. Okay. That's supposed to start sometime next month. Cool. And is there? Do you know where people can find out more about it? Um, they, they, I'm sure they're going to be putting out more and more press releases about it as it goes. But uh, they've already done um, uh, like a, a YouTube video about it. And I think it's part of HBO Max also. So um, oh, cool. They should be able to look at some of the work uh, uh, that Dennis Cowles t- was talking about. Okay, they did a spot with two guys from Compton. They put out a has a a black comic book shop, shop that's black owned that does um that brings in it's a, that brings in a lot of uh I guess like um they do a lot of stuff uh like uh I won't say do like action figures and stuff like that but they also do comics and stuff like that right like they wanted they wanted people to understand that they they started from nothing and they, they were influenced by milestone so they wanted to show what that influence finally did for them and it's a pretty nice shot. So I, I did some artwork for that particular piece, and Dennis kind of was telling them, uh, I think his name is one guy named Freon. I can't remember the other brother, brother's name. I'm so sorry about that. But, um, yeah, they, they put the, the, the book, the, the story together, and Dennis is telling about the Maso Initiative in order to give other people a chance here to uh, tell stories and bring in a new flock of people of color so they could be able to tell better stories also because it should keep going. There should be an influx where more people come in and add to the medium, so they wanted to make it more, more accessible, more because uh, a lot of people don't know that, especially after the whole situation when it kind of went digital. Um, right. They didn't really have an access for you to, be able to like just mail stuff in anymore. So right. they need to create a situation where people can continue to do new stuff and be able to show that they can bring in new talent that way. Also, like a like a grateful league of sorts, I would say. Is it is it um, pencils and and inks? Is it also like colors? Well, I, like I think so. I think I think they 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 create a, a writer artist team based upon something that the writer puts together, and they got it by a writer, a, a veteran writer, and then they had the artist put together that stuff. I guess at some point, if they pick the one that they like the best, that one gets colored and lettered up, and then they will show that this is a book that wound up one that wound up winning in the uh, milestone initiative, oh, and nice. kind of give more people to kind of jump into it, you know. Very there cool. needs to be that kind of see, kind of get you know, uh, people access to know that there's a way to get in. So, I think that's a good way to do it. I think it should be. I think Marvel should open up and do their own version. Um, right. Uh, DC yeah. got theirs through uh, Milestone, but they should open up an, another version so that everyone can try to c- kind of bring in their new version. Because if you look at Instagram, there's so many great artists up there. I'm sure oh, yeah. each one of them can be able to tear that bad boy up. So, oh, give yeah. them an access. You know, so they could they could come in and. There'd be new blood coming into the system. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, definitely. And I know I did see when I looked on the uh, Milestone uh, Media or whatever um, website, they also did. They had something that said something about the Milestone Initiative yeah. on there. It's probably just a press release or something, but yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah, definitely look for it on the uh, YouTube. Especially if you're watching this on YouTube, look up the Milestone Initiative on on YouTube to yep. to find it. But yeah. uh yeah, that's awesome. 
Yeah, very it's, cool. It's, it's a good thing. I think more stuff like that needs to happen. It's, it's something something that will continue to grow the industry, you know, not something that will grow stale and just kind of fall away, you know. Everyone's so caught up in getting that stuff uh, put into movies and streaming uh, and TV, they forget that, you know, milestone, I mean, mile, not just milestone, but comics has its own medium that can still do the job of telling stories. So that should never go away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and it gives them skills, like like you were saying, about just storytelling in general, but also it can kind of translate into into other uh, visual art yeah. forms and things like and that. And education, too, so. too, because, you know, yeah. I mean, I grew up reading a lot of comics. It was kind of the one thing that had me reading. And then oh, yeah, yeah. knowing that there was some kind of stuff that was any, any kind of concept that was introduced into comics had me going out to go find out where they got that from. So it was kind of yep. like a starter to get you to read bigger books and bigger novels and stuff, you know? So yep. I think it's a thing that needs to be continuously pushed, not just through, uh, you know, certain neighborhoods, but in all schools. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Especially with as, as visually driven as most people are, most people are visual learners. So mm-hmm. it's a good, it's a good medium to, to do Perfect. that. And yeah. Yeah. Well, very cool. Well, we can let you go before I say something else stupid. It's not, man. I'm, not, I'm just, <laughs> there's no big deal. Now everyone's gonna like all the stuff that I do. I actually appreciate that. Like, yeah, you yeah. Know, if you if you like everything I've done, we have an issue. Yeah, you're like raising your I don't like it. I just thought, when he said that, I was just like, is he talking about my my logo? I was like, I'm gonna give it to him now. I'm gonna give it to him. That was awesome. Thank you, yeah. Chris. Yeah, no thank problem, you very man. Much. Yeah, yeah. I have fun. We'll let you yeah. know when this airs. All right. Yeah. We will make sure we, will we focus on the part when I turn him red. <laughs> yeah, can you do a logo for it? Oh, sure. I, I, are you gonna like it? <laughs> uh, actually, I did one. I will have to send. I'll, if I have not shared it with you, I'll have to share it with you, and and yeah, you can riff on it. Okay. Um, I sent it a, to him. Oh, did you? Did you? The, did you? Yeah, the oh, the crisscross. Yeah. I did the uh, the. Oh, that the, was you. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was me. Yeah, that was me. Should I should I try out for the? My it's like kind of at least you got at least you spelled my name right. Yeah, <laughs> some people don't even do that. The, the people do. Uh, I believe me. I keep catching. I kept catching myself writing C R I S, and leaving out the H or giving you two S's on on. Oh Chris. man, let me tell you, I've written that. I've written it this way for over what almost thirty years now, and people are still getting it wrong. So. The fact yeah, that you got to write too. that way. That's, just... that, that's why you go by Chris Williams? No. Yeah. They forced yeah, me, I'm, I'm, they had had force me to do that. Yeah. They sort of like they need to know if it's my – I guess there was a lot yeah. of fake accounts out there, so they went through this yeah. nonsense. I was like, I want people to know, I want people to know me just crisscross. I kind of keep Chris Williams off to, to the public side of things because yeah. I don't want people to get mixed up. So there's too many people named Chris Williams, you know, moms, yeah. daughters, you know. Yeah, you know, dogs. Is everybody's yep. name Chris? So, you know, oh, it's yeah. a conspiracy. So, I just wanted to make sure I yeah. had a name that stood out. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I, I, I agree. Uh, yeah, and I always, I always remembered it ever since you, you, you I saw it. So, yeah, I picked the right name. Yeah. Yep. 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 But uh, so, yeah, we. Yep. Was there any, any last words or anything? No, just uh, I got a lot of work going on this year, so I guess as time goes on, everyone's gonna know about it. Uh, definitely, the first first album is gonna be at Blood Syndicate. So, um, yeah, any new stuff? Uh, I think the the Wave Blue World is gonna have something I did with uh, Cameron Johnson and, and his boy. I, I call him Cavers Kelsey, um, and it's gonna be called Tower. That's coming out this year also. So cool. Uh, there's other stuff. Any other stuff is just kind of in the works, and I can't really talk too much about it yet, but. I'll definitely yeah. let people know about it and maybe come back to you guys, your your, your podcast, your YouTube, and let yeah. people know about we it. We can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. 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 Sounds good. No problem, um, man. Yeah. Well, have a have a good weekend and give your dog some love from us. I am. I got to walk in about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to be doing stuff to that carpet I don't like. <laughs> yep. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we'll we'll see you later. Have a good one. All right, thanks for having me on.